and I think we're live. My little red button just this second went on. So good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is Saturday morning, the 20, I'm guessing, I'm making a stab at the dark, in the dark. Is it the 23rd or something, Chris? 24th. <laughs> 24th of, it is uh, Saturday morning, the 25th of April. How did we get where, you know, how did we get there? Um, anyway, uh, before we begin, first of all, I'd like to say good morning to my spirit, spirit guy, Great Eagle. If this is the, if this is going to be the quality of the show today, I'm already <laughs> skipping over my words. Uh, come on, get you can get it together, Rosemary. Right. So I'd like to say good morning to my spirit guy, Great Eagle, who is standing to my right side. And no, that was my left. Sorry, that's my right <laughs> side. Oh boy, we could be in trouble today. Uh, and uh, and uh, I'd also like to say good morning to Chris uh, uh, over there in Vermont in wintry, snowy, cold Vermont. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Rosemary. Good morning, everyone. Uh, now, is it cold and wintry and snowy over there? <laughs> well, actually, it's warming up. The snow that we just had is already melted and we might actually oh. see the 60s today. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Well, here in Florida, uh, it's gorgeous. There are beautiful breezes. You know, um, I, I know that a, a lot of people have the, the impression that Florida is sort of like that wall of heat. Um, but if you're on the coast, whichever coast it is, I think, if you're on the coast, we're, and I'm on the west coast, uh, and... Um, you know, you're sort of close to the water, you get breezes. Even in the heat of the summer, you get these beautiful breezes and you can sit on the beach and feel these beautiful breezes. But the only thing you've got to watch is that the breezes can be, especially if you're on the beach, they can be sort of, you know, they can make you think it's it's cooler than it is. So you always have to wear your sunblock, you always have to wear, but you know, I sit under an umbrella on the beach with a big, a big hat and an umbrella. Are you picturing it, everybody out there? Are you picturing that I could go out this afternoon with my chair, with my umbrella, uh, what else would I take with me? Uh, with my big hat and, of course, with my Kindle, because I go everywhere with my Kindle in my hand. I love, love, love my Kindle. I did say uh, yesterday to, uh, or whenever it was, Thursday, I told everybody I am an avid reader, uh, which I, uh, no, no, well, that was last night. Oh, all right, I give up. We are starting again. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> I'm getting my days mixed up. I'm getting my conversations with people mixed up. My, my daughter calls it old age. Um, some people call it Alzheimer's. <laughs> I like to call it old timers because uh, it sounds nicer. But we're going to start again uh, because I sort of just had these fabulous images sort of flicker across my mind. Do I really want to go to the beach this afternoon or do I want to be in the kitchen? And I think I might be in the kitchen this afternoon because I'm going to make some amazing digestive biscuits what could they be if you're not british you won't know what they are so i'm going to make some hopefully some digestive biscuits this afternoon and of course i have to keep my supply of hobnobs going because i like to have my hobnobs available so i think i'm going to be not on the beach this afternoon i'm going to be spending time in the kitchen are you all wishing that i'd shut up now are you all wishing that I'd stop rambling. Are you sitting there thinking, what's she talking about? What is she talking about? Well, I think I found my voice because yesterday I was not very well. I was throwing up all night long the night before last, and uh, I don't. I must have eaten something that was pretty awful. Uh, it tasted good, but it must have been pretty awful doing a number on my stomach. But here I am. Chris called me this morning and she said, are you well enough to do the show today? And I'm actually not only well enough, I'm bounced right back as I try to do. And here we are. So I'm looking forward to the weekend. I'm seeing people tonight for dinner that I haven't seen for ages and ages and ages. And uh, what else am I doing this weekend? Um, 
Yes, I might be clearing out some closets. I'm going to be doing some more, a little bit of gardening, uh, getting things ready because I still have some more herbs to plant and some more stuff to do in that uh, in, in that arena. So I'm really looking forward to my weekend. Chris, what are you planning on doing this weekend? I'm doing more work for your Soul Evolutions course because it excites me digging back deep into it. I'll probably be writing some more of my book, doing some editing of it. Uh, we're going to go out in the sunshine and take the cat for a little walk. Oh, nice. Who knows? Who knows what else? Well, uh, well, we're, we're both of us then really, really looking forward uh, to the weekend. And um, now we're coming towards the end of April and we do have this great little uh, thing that was going on it isn't a competition we can't call it a competition because it isn't but it's like an art show we want to put on an art show all the way through the month of may so chris has asked anybody out there who has a little piece of art we're looking for people who can give us a piece of art that either pertains to my uh, the anniversary of the 25th year of the publication of the eagle and the rose uh, so we're looking either for a little bit of artwork to sort of, you know, to, to, to go along with that or some sort of spiritual artwork or some inspired artwork. And I have to tell you that, you know, when I was in Vermont and we had the farm and we used to have these lovely um, three day weekends there. And one of the one of the um, things that I used to do there, which I love to do, is uh, we had you could call it an art class if you like, but it was actually much more about painting uh, your soul or painting your aura or painting whatever is going on within your own soul. And uh, you don't have to be an artist now. And it was amazing because sometimes we did have artists who would come for those classes. And sometimes the artists would be stuck because they... You know they'd been trained into it in a certain way and the people who'd never lifted a paintbrush before could just let it go and let their soul soar basically and let the aura you know let the aura out and visualize their aura and so on and they could just create some beautiful beautiful things so that's what we used to do now my story today because you you, you think did you think I've forgotten and I haven't really forgotten my story today because this story time Saturday morning story time my story today is a little bit about healing it's a little bit about children or a child in particular uh, and it's an awful lot about magic now to preface this story um, I do believe in magic and when I'm with my patients I like whether they're old or young doesn't matter I do like to give them a little magic and that magic comes in the form of loving it comes in the form of caring it comes in the form of um, allowing your own soul to shine through so that other people can see so let's go for it shall we so here we go once upon a time because it is our story time so all stories as you all know one begin with once upon a time so once upon a time many years ago it's got to be at least 15 or so if not 20 years ago um i had a patient and her name let's call her victoria we'll call her victoria so Victoria was, she was very young. She was probably seven or eight years old, I'm going to say. And her father brought her in to see us. Um, the first time she came, her mother came as well, but her mother was not nearly as receptive to healing. And she only came along to make sure, I think, that we weren't going to do something terrible and awful to her child. As a mother, I would have done the same thing, being very protective. But all those years ago, you know, people weren't nearly as receptive as they are now to healing. They certainly weren't nearly as receptive to, to somebody like myself. So I, I can see why parents would be a little bit uncertain about bringing a, their child to me. 
However, the father was insistent. This little girl, Victoria, um, she, she, I think, I seem to remember that her father carried her in or half carried her in because it seemed that she'd lost the use of one of her legs. She could walk on tiptoe occasionally or mostly she would hop. She'd been to various doctors, she'd been to clinics, she'd had tests and more tests, she'd had x-rays, she'd had scans, you name it, Victoria had had every, everything. And unfortunately, because she, she couldn't uh, use her leg, it was she said it was too painful to stretch her leg. Um, and because the doctors uh, could not find anything at all wrong with this child, they couldn't see what was going on. There was no cure, there was nothing, everything they tried to do just simply did not work. And this child, obviously, if she used her legs, she was in great pain. Um, so her limb, this particular limb, the muscles in her limb began to waste away. Her one foot was much, much smaller than the other foot. And she was having almost continual pain if she accidentally stretched or if she actually or if she accidentally moved her leg she was in a lot of pain and so the doctors and the surgeons and all of these specialists that she's been to see were talking now of amputation because it seemed to be the only thing that they could think because they could not find a reason why this child could not use her leg. So she was brought to us. Now as often happens, when I say us by the way, I mean our healing centre. Uh, uh, we had a, a, a few healing centres in the north of England. So she was brought to one of our healing centres. And um, she was brought to us by the father who just could not bear the idea of his little girl's leg being amputated. Also, she was brought to us as a last resort. And, you know, years and years ago, before people sort of started talking much more than, uh, as they do now, before people started talking about and accepting and understanding what uh, he healing is about, what energy is about, what all of this topic is about, um, you know, uh, it just, it wasn't, it simply wasn't talked about. So, so the fact that he brought her was as a last resort and the fact that people always came to us as a last resort instead of the first resort which is what happens very often now means that whatever is going on in a person whether it's cancer whether it's a tumor whether it's um uh, in this case uh you know uh, an issue with uh, with the child's leg whatever the issue is because we were considered the last resort um Unfortunately, what is going on or what was going on with the patient had become, had gotten to the point of almost no return. And here we were with Victoria in that place of no return. So if we couldn't do anything, then the next step for this family, the next step for this little girl was they would be seriously considering amputation. So in she came. Now, our healing center was busy. We had patients every week. They would come in, you know, uh, sometimes 10, sometimes 20, sometimes 30 patients uh, a night we would have in that place. And um, of course, most of them were adults. The majority of them were adults or a teenage. So here is little, this little girl, seven or eight years old. And... Um, Every patient in the place was looking, was watching, was listening. Every patient wondered how we were going to do with this little girl, how we were going to deal with this little girl. And I remember um, taking her on myself because we had, I had lots of students there who were fabulous healers, but I decided to take on this little girl myself. And so that's what I did. And we had her laid on a bed and I was talking to her 
and I was looking at her aura, I was looking at her energy field, I was looking at what was going on with her that was, you know, creating or causing this problem. I too, like the doctors, like the surgeons, could find when I looked, and remember I'm looking in my way, <laughs> I'm not looking on x-rays, but <clears throat> I might as well be looking at really good x-rays, because sometimes when I look at a person, I look at a person's body, it is like being able to see right into them and right into their physical body and to see what's going on. And I could really see uh, nothing that should have caused this. I could see no physical reason why this child was struggling with this. Before she had this issue, apparently she was very active. She used to ride a bike. She used to like swimming. She used to like to do all of those things. And then all of a sudden, with no warning whatsoever, and, and for no apparent reason, here she was. And she'd been like this now, I think, for at least 18 months, if not two years. So here we were, the last resort. Now, you know, you all know that... Um, if you go to a doctor and you and you like the doctor, the doctor's personality fits your personality, you, you, you're more likely to respond to that doctor, you're more likely to listen to what that doctor has to say, and healers are no different. And I always say there are healers for people, because you might not like one healer, but you might really like another. Fortunately, in this case, I'm good with kids, and so... You know, I just have that knack. They seem to like me. I like them, mostly. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, we all have our moments, don't we? And um, in uh, in Victoria's uh, case, um, as I as she laid on the bed, I went up to her, said hello to her, told her who I was and held her hands. And I realised very quickly that what was required here was a bit of magic, maybe even a lot of magic. Now, as I've already said, my grandson gets magic from me every day uh, because it's not just loving, it's a special kind of loving. It's a loving and sharing. It's a joining together of two souls. It's a joining together of that spiritual energy. Uh, it's all about how you connect with your energy, with, uh, with whoever it is that you're trying to uh, connect with or make a connection with. And as a healer, I knew that it was very, very necessary for me to make sure that with this little girl, I was able to blend with her, blend with her energy bring her along and into my aura, give her my strength, give her my energy, give her a big part of who I am. And I knew that in order to do that, we needed to have a little magic. One of the first things I did with Victoria was to talk about colours, because kids, most kids love colouring, or most kids can visualise, much more so than adults can. And so, um, using colour, which is very important in healing, and if you come to my Wednesdays when we do Healing Wednesdays and I talk to you about colour and colour healing and colour energy, you'll know more of what I'm talking about. But colour is very important. The colour blue is the universal healing colour. The colour green brings peace and harmony and so on and so forth, throughout the colour spectrum, we have different uh, colour coming in, sort of like in a rainbow of colours, if you like, coming in at different vibrational levels. So, am I talking weirdly now? Am I confusing you all? Because we're now talking about the vibration, and we're talking about vibrational levels, but when we're talking about healing, vibration is important. When we're talking about connecting with the spirit world, vibration is important. You've got to get on the same vibrational level as the people that you're trying to connect with. And in healing, and with healing this little girl, because she was a child, it was in many ways easier to do it because she was very open to it. So I talked to her about different colours and how they could help her and how if she got nervous or if she got 
upset if she visualized the color green, like green balloons floating in the sky, or if she visualized the color gold, gold balloons floating in the sky. Now she's a little girl, so my little bit of magic for this child was ribbons and she was a really she was a little girl who liked frilly stuff and she loved ribbons so when i'm asking her to visualize i'm asking her think about all these ribbons floating around in the sky and i want you to think about wrapping them around yourself and so on so okay so now here we have this little girl she comes into our healing center she can barely put her foot on the ground she's hopping mostly and a week goes by a few weeks go by she always comes with her father we never see her mother again the mother is refusing to 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 be involved or to participate however the father's insisting so he's bringing her and which is a good thing because I was able to say to the father look if we do this or if you encourage her to think this way or that way and so on and so forth so you know she has a parent who is supporting what I'm saying and supporting her in trying to do the things that I'm encouraging her to do which is healing through visualization so the weeks went by and each week she would come in and each week the rest of my patients at the center would watch and they would look and they, you could see they started to see improvement. Now, instead of this little girl coming in, barely able to touch her foot to the floor, she was now able to put her toes on the floor and walk in on her toes. And on and on the improvement went, and it was going really great. What I also did for this little girl was I gathered together uh, a whole bunch of ribbons and um, part way through now months into this now and she was improving and she was improving really really well and she was although although she was not able to put her foot fully on the floor yet she was a good halfway there if not more than halfway there but I knew that I was going off to Hong Kong for a few weeks which meant leaving my little Victoria, but I had lots of other healers who had been with me and who knew what she needed. So I felt quite content. So I made her a brooch, sort of a, a, a pin, uh, with different colored ribbons. The, color, the, the colors of the ribbons were the colors that I, would, I had asked her to visualize. And I, I said to her, this is what I want you to do with this. At night time, when you, before you go to sleep, I want you to have your daddy pin this above your bed and then you can look at it while you're sleeping. And if you wake up and you get nervous, I want you to look at these colours and they'll, be, they'll enable you to visualise and just visualise. Imagine them wrapping around you and giving you healing and making you feel good and making you feel great and so on. Um, and if you feel like it, you can wear, you can take that down and put it on uh, if you're feeling not so good that day, just put it on you and then you can look down at it or you can just touch the ribbons or you can just feel them and they'll remind you that all of this energy and all of this beautiful coloured energy, this incredible healing energy is always around you and I want you to visualise it being around you and visualise it if your leg is hurting or if you're in pain or you get a bit nervous, I want you to just visualise being washed in this incredible healing energy so off i went to the far east i went into china i went to hong kong i went to singapore i went to different places um i'd been gone perhaps two or three weeks when the first letter arrived from one of my healers saying um victoria is not doing very well and then i got another letter then i got a phone call from different people saying it seems as if she's in remission. She's back to barely being able to foot, uh, put her foot down, barely able to, um, to put her foot down and she's now walking barely on tiptoe again. And um, so 
I arrived back in England and of course the first thing I did was check on my young patient and and uh, when they came, when they came to our healing centre, when our father came to the healing centre, he, he, I took him to one side and I said to him, tell me what's been going on because this child was now, instead of this bright and happy little girl who was improving, was now right back to the little girl who I'd first seen. So I said to him, can you tell me what's going on? And he said, I think she just misses you and she feels that you are the magic and that she needs you and without you she's not going to get better again you know it's a common thread isn't it you hear of patients falling in love with their doctors you know it's a common thread throughout any medical or any healing process that one person can become very important to the patient and without that one person being there the patient can take a dive but now I was back and so now I had to be tough with this little girl and to say to her, you know, just because I'm not here doesn't mean I've not been thinking about you, doesn't mean I've not been sending my thoughts to you, does not mean anything like that. We didn't have to quite start again, but in the beginning it was almost like start having to start again. But this little girl quickly, quickly, quickly grabbed hold of me, quickly, quickly, quickly grabbed hold of all of the exercises and all the visualization and all of that stuff. And again, my patients were watching the other patients in the center. And every time this little girl walked in, they were monitoring her progress until yes. One day, and I would like to tell you it only took a few weeks, but it didn't. But one day, her father's smiling face came in and in behind him walked properly, both feet on the ground, our little patient. No problems, no pains. The father was crying. He took hold of me. It's a miracle. Well, yes, it was a miracle because the doctors had given up. Yes, it was a miracle because it was magic. And yes, it was a miracle because luckily I'd been able to connect with this child's soul, with this child's energy. I was able to infuse her energy field with my energy. Well, eventually, of course, she didn't need to come back to us. Um, it was quite a while later, maybe a year later, that I saw her on a TV show. Uh, a very well-known TV host had heard of her story and uh, had had her on the, uh, on the TV and she was describing how, you know, she, they, they were, the mother and the father were describing how the child was uh, close to having her leg amputated, uh, but here she was. And um, sadly, the, uh, the only mention uh, we got was when uh, the host of this show said to her, so Victoria, do you, have any, do you have any hobbies? And she said, healing. And everybody passed over it. Now, we wouldn't do that today, would we? We wouldn't pass over it today. We would want to know more about it. But it was almost as if nobody really knew what she was talking about. And I remember some of my patients saying to me, it's not fair, Rosemary. And I remember some of the healers saying to me, they, you know, nobody has given us any credit. And I remember smiling and saying, does it matter? Who, who cares who gets the credit? Who cares? It doesn't matter. The thing that matters is that she's now riding. She's now swimming three times a week. She's riding a bicycle. She's doing all the things that healthy children should do. And that is the thing that matters. Now, of course, if you're a carer, if you're a nurse, if you're a doctor, whoever you are, if you're a carer, if you do something that's good, that's something that's fine, we're human. We like the accolades, don't we? Of course we do. But if you go into the healing arts thinking that you're going to get accolades, you're going to be very disappointed because it is not. 
not going to happen, perhaps occasionally. But that's not what you do it for. You do it for the magic. Because as I was giving Victoria her magic, believe you me, my other patients at the healing centre were getting magic every time they saw her, every time they heard her, every time they saw her improving. It gave them hope and inspiration. So she gave them magic. Um, every time I saw her, every time she smiled up at me with those adoring eyes, every time I held her hand, she gave me the magic. And the magic was the joy and the unbelievable uh, faith that shone through her eyes. The faith in me, yes. But then, um, more to the point, her faith in her own self. If she's watching, she probably isn't, but if she's watching, or if any of my patients are during that time uh, were watching, we'd love to hear from you. And of course, we'd love to hear from Victoria. We'd love to hear how she's doing because she's got to be at least if she was, well, let me see if she was eight then, seven or eight then, the same age as my grandson. Wow, can you imagine that? Um, if if she's watching, which is you know got to be at least fifteen years ago, she'll be in her twenties or maybe even getting towards thirty now. I wonder how she's doing. Well, I know that she's walking well. I know that there are no issues there. Uh, I know that whatever was going on with her, and you could say mm, maybe it was a you know maybe it was a you know. Uh, an emotional thing maybe it, you know maybe it wasn't physical maybe it was an emotional thing maybe who knows doesn't matter what it is doesn't matter who helped her through it the thing is that she through that uh, period of her life hopefully has grown remembers and understands that yes there is magic in healing the end there you go, Chris. Did you like that story? I wish we had an applause button because I think that's what everybody in the chat would be doing right now. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, well, I was going to say ahead. two follow-up questions immediately following this story. Um, Mehdi says, what did Gray Eagle advise you to do having to do with Victoria? Magic. Always magic using color healing which is we do we which is what we do as you know chris and chris for those of you out there who don't know chris is a fully qualified healer in my organization and um how long have you been with me chris since 2000 so 21 years oh gosh is it really 20 21 years that you when you told me i was doing it all wrong <laughs> come on now <laughs> <laughs> That'll have that... to be a story another time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is a story for another time. And in 21 years, you've learned, I think, Chris, that, you know, uh, Grey Eagle is always there with us when we're healing, always there with me when I'm giving healing, always there with me with me when I'm giving consultations, and, <laughs> and is always there with me in the kitchen. So, so um, you know... Uh, as I've said, I, as I said in the story, um, it doesn't matter who it was. So if somebody said, oh, wow, Rosemary's amazing, I would have to say, well, actually, no. Um, use the use of energy it was, and the knowledge of energy was given to me by Grey Eagle. So he's amazing. And he would say, yeah, but the universe is amazing. It, it doesn't matter who gets the accolades. What matters is that these things really do work. Oh, so we just got a flurry of a flurry of comments in the chat room. So let me I'm I'm going to try to Go pick some it. that apply directly to what we're okay. talking about right now. Um, Jillian, I'm actually, I'm actually just so you know, I'm sort of just don't oh, so just sorry, just turning the sound up because I'm finding a little bit difficult to hear you. But go ahead. Okay. Uh, Jillian says it reminds me of the ripples that were talked about in a previous live stream ripples of magic and love yes yes exactly cheryl says i asked a while ago for healing for my sister 
and she is doing very well. No more falling and doing extremely well with her breast cancer. Much oh, better energy as well. Thanks for all you do. Oh, you're very welcome. We love to hear those stories. And when we, you know, we if if anybody out there would like to have healing, we do have a healing book. Chris, you know, if you email us and let us know, Chris will put you in our healing book and our healers will give you, send healing to you every single day. And, um, you know, it, 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 it works. Um, let me just say to that point that healing is not about necessarily curing the physical problem. Healing is first and foremost about healing the soul, bringing light, bringing energy to the soul, creating an environment where the soul can thrive. And as the soul heals and as the soul thrives, then that energy that is within us, which is our soul, permeates throughout the physical body and can make huge differences in, in, in all of the stuff that we're going through. So carry on, Chris. Uh, Kat says, what an absolutely amazing, magical story. I've just <laughs> ordered Give the Gift of Healing book. Oh, right. Okay. And I know there's somebody else who mentioned that book. There we go. Chris says, I just reread your book, Give the Gift of Healing. I send healing to my 88-year-old mom every day, and I oh. soak in blue healing for myself during my morning bath time. Oh, I love it. I love it. And again, uh, through the month of May, because May is our anniversary month, 25 years. You can't let a quarter of a century go by, can you? You can't let the anniversary, a quarter of a century go by without celebrating. We're having a massive big celebration this May. We're doing two webinars. I'm going to be talking to people in the spirit world in our first webinar, which is the 8th of May, you know, giving messages. That's all we're going to be doing. I'm going to be talking to people in the spirit world, keeping my fingers crossed, hoping they will talk back to me and give me messages. Grey Eagles are laughing because it's pretty much a given that we will be getting messages for people who join our webinar, which is exciting. And the most exciting of all is on the 22nd of May, we're going to have direct voice communication. I'm sorry, I'm so excited. Grey Eagles excited for me and with me here. We're going to have direct voice communication from Grey Eagle. He will be speaking to you, you know, bypassing me. <laughs> I shall be pretty much obsolete for quite a bit of the time during that webinar, which I'm grateful for because we're going to hear from Grey Eagle, his wise, his wonderful and his incredible words from him, from the source, using direct voice. Mm. Uh, so they're coming up. We're also going to be having on May in May our Motivational Monday. So if you want to join in and you've got an issue uh, with, with something that you need to do, would like to do, and you can't find the motivation for it, you know, please email us and we'll deal with it. We'll, we'll help you. I'll give you some motivation, hopefully inspired, of course, let me tell you, inspired, of course, by Great Eagle and maybe inspired by others in the spirit world. We, we never know what's going to happen when we do these things. Uh, we're also going to have our Healing Wednesdays. And I've just given you a, a, an incredible example of how healing does work and uh, so we're going to be uh, doing our Healing Wednesdays and I'm going to be talking to you about color healing and how you, every one of you, can give healing to yourselves, you can be inspired to give healing to others and how you can use that energy, that color energy in your healing work or just simply bathing yourself in it as this lovely lady just said to us. So we're excited about doing those things. Uh, also, throughout the month of May, we're popping in and out. You'll find me sometimes in the kitchen. You'll find me sometimes, I don't know, in the garden maybe, or on the beach, or who knows where. Maybe I'll be walking through a supermarket, and I'll sort of just all of a sudden I'll connect with you, and I'll be whispering and saying, I'm in the public supermarket, uh, looking for flour, or looking for whatever it is. Uh, and uh, I can't see why you'd be interested in it, but I know that people are. So, hey, we're going to be doing that as well. Uh, you'll get to see that I live a very boring life. Outside my work, my life is 
sort of fairly boring in a way. Anyway, so we're going to be doing all of those things and I'll be having you in my kitchen and maybe showing you how I bake uh, different things. Uh, maybe, um, I, I want to show you the hobnobs, I really do. I love my hobnobs. Anyway, sorry Chris, getting carried away now in the kitchen. But we're going to be doing all these things on our, um, <laughs> throughout the month of May, on our anniversary um, explosion. And um, we're also going to be, from time to time, we've done it a couple of times now, we're going to be doing our off-the-cuff stuff which means that at any given moment of the week, of the day, of the hour, I might pop up, pop up on your screens. You might see Rosemary Altea live and you'll think, what? It's 10 o'clock at night. What is she doing? And Chris and I will be doing our off-the-cuff stuff uh, where you'll be able to ask questions and connect and do all of that stuff. Chris. So it would be really important for people to subscribe to your YouTube or to yes. um, like and follow you on your different Facebook pages because you've got three. You've got the healing book page, you've got the author page, and then you've got the one where you're only allowed 5,000 friends and you're always maxed at that for your personal Facebook. So I'd always go to the author page of Facebook. Um, oh, okay. So subscribe, 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 subscribe. And share, 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 share. Somebody actually mentioned, I think, on Thursday to everybody, you know, when you watch these shows, um, I think, you know, once we're done, I think there's a like button. You just click like and, and you can like us or like what you've seen or heard. Uh, there's also a share button. And all you have to do before you totally come out of this is think about me for one moment more when I've said goodbye and click like and click share. And that share goes to everybody. And then, you know, the more people we can get involved, the more people we, you know, get, can share all of this stuff with, the better. Because there are so many people out there who haven't heard of this stuff or, you know, they have misconceptions about what it is that we do. So, you know, uh, think, you know, think a little bit about me just afterwards and click that share button, would you? Chris. One more thing, Rosemary. I know some people have sent us in questions for the direct voice communication. Can you help people frame a question? Tell them how to do that. Okay. Uh, somebody asked me this the other day. And so um, when, we, when, we, when we're sort of on the 8th of May, we're going to be giving messages and uh, you know all the questions is my mother okay or what or how is my brother doing or what you, you've got all of those questions easy questions to ask so what you ask uh, what kinds of questions if you are you know going to be joining us on the 22nd of may what kind of questions could you ask uh gray eagle because i'm saying to the, those people who are joining us those people who want to join us for that webinar you will get a chance whether whether gray eagle will choose to answer your question i can't say but you will get a, ch a chance to ask a question of gray eagle and and so people are uh, curious about what to ask so here here is what i want you to think about if for some amazing reason the dalai lama was coming to your town and was going to be sitting in your living room or if um, a Buddha or Muhammad or whoever, um, I'm trying to think of all the great and amazing uh, wise people of the world that we've had. Um, uh, if if uh, some really amazing spiritual entity were to arrive unexpectedly and you had a chance, you had time, you knew they were coming, if Jesus Christ was going to pop into your living room, but you knew it was coming, uh, and uh, you know, and you and you had an opportunity to ask one question of this wise and incredible spiritual person, um, I don't think you'd waste it by saying, "Can you tell me what my future is?" Because that's not what they're about. But here you have an entity, a wise, a remarkable, a knowledgeable spiritual entity who is going to be stepping into your living room 
what is that one question that you might want to ask? Is it a question about the universe? Uh, is it a question about how as human beings, uh, you know, we should deal with a particular issue or a particular uh, problem? Um, you know, what question would you want to know uh, from that wise entity that might help you to grow or that it might help you to learn or you're simply just curious about uh, what do the spirit world think of us um, in relation to um, you know how we treat people you know the um, I'm, let, let me just sort of go back a little bit here um what would Gregel think, and I'm going. I'm giving you a, a question that might be posed to him. Um, what would Gregel think about our justice system? Um, now, in the Native American culture, years and years ago, you, if you did a crime or a crime in the eyes of the tribe, you, there were consequences. And those consequences often fit the crime. So in the Bible, in the Old Testament, we read about an eye for an eye. Um, is What does the spirit world uh, think of these things? What does the spirit world think about um, our justice and how, and how we apply justice? Um, because we see people who commit heinous, heinous acts who get away with them all the time. Um, does that mean that they get away with them? Have they escaped their punishment? Or will there be some kind of justice meted out from the spirit world or from that higher power? Um, who? So, you know, lots of... I, I don't want to just put that one question in your mind. I'm just giving it as an example of many examples of, um, you know the way that we think as a world today, the, the way that we think as a population today, uh, how does it fit in with the spiritual viewpoint that perhaps Grey Eagle might have? So is that helpful, Chris, do we think? Is that, or am I, I confusing people all the more? No, I think that's really helpful for people. So if you are joining us uh, and you have a question for Grey Eagle, not through me, because I will not be answering. I will not be interpreting. He will not be talking to me and telling me, and then I'm telling you. He will be speaking directly to you, to all of you who join our uh, webinar. This is an amazing, you know, very rare, very, very, very rare occurrence. This is only the second time that Gregor will have done this in a public forum. He did the first time he did it in uh, December. And people who joined our webinar, we're still getting comments. People are still wowed. People are still moved. It's going to be one of those. It's, I know that just listening to him is going to be one of those incredible and stunning moments uh, that people ju you just don't you just don't forget. It's awe inspiring. So, uh, so um, uh, you know, sort of think about if I were to get one opportunity for one question. Uh, to you know to ask the most spiritual person Buddha um, Muhammad um, I don't know uh, Christ would be my pick um, uh, actually I, I, I got I've got my pick because I've got gray eagles so, like, so I'm, I'm fortunate in that I can I can uh, get this all the time which is great but here we have this amazing opportunity for all of you who want to join us and uh, so you know so uh, I would personally say don't miss it because he is jaw-droppingly amazing. Chris you've experienced it one time what do you think? I can't wait for the next time. <laughs> you know what All I right, would let's... what I would caution yeah. people is Sometimes we freeze ourselves looking for perfection to come up with the perfect question. I think the most, I think the questions that are going to come up for people are the ones that sort of fleet across your brain when you're doing something else and you go, I wonder about, just write it down. 
send it in. Rosemary and Greg are going to choose which questions are going to be answered. So there's no right or wrong question. No, I, excuse me. You're wrong. I'm, I'm not wrong. going to choose. Got nothing to do with me. <laughs> so if your question is asked and not answered, it I <laughs> am negating all responsibility. I, there's nothing to do with me. <laughs> but you're right, Chris. Yes. All right. Let's continue on, shall we? Wilma, who's from the Netherlands, says, I went several years ago to Amstelveen in the Netherlands, and you were amazing. Oh, well, yes. Well, I, oh, right. Who did, where was it? Amstelveen. Okay. Now, listen to me, my darling. Can we have more? We want more information. Uh, you can't just say, I went here and you were amazing. We Because I I think I mentioned this on Thursday. Don't expect me to remember because I don't remember. Can we have some more? Can we have a little bit more detail? Can you let us know, you know, what, what was that amazing piece of information or what was that e amazing experience that you had? We're looking for people who can talk about this, who have had that experience, who can truly inspire other people because there are so many people who join us on these shows who've never had that experience and they don't know what you're talking about. Could you could you fill us in a little bit? I'm ignoring that. That's my phone in the background and we're going to ignore it completely. Sorry, I forgot to put it on silence. Keep going, Chris. Let's keep pretending that we're not hearing the phone in the background there. <laughs> uh, Chris is on from Ontario, Canada and says, I won your book, Soul Signs, at an auction last night. I can't wait to pick it up what? later today. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that one. <laughs> never? Oh, wow. Well, tell us, what was the auction for? How, you know, how, how did they, how were they able to auction this off? Incredible. Mm. Oh, we want to know about that, don't we, Chris? Yes. I, I wonder how much you had to pay for if it was auctioned <laughs> uh, obviously i'm not getting any of the money which is great i hope it was for a good cause uh but hey can you it was chris right uh, yes can you tell us a little bit more we're always curious about these stories yes keep going chris sharon says good morning rosemary gray eagle morning. um digestive biscuits are my mom's fave <laughs> well you know, McVitie's are the best ever, uh, but um, I'm going to give it a go. I've got an old Irish recipe. We shall see. We shall see. We shall see. And I shall let you know. So, you know, I have made digestive biscuits before and they didn't taste at all like McVitie's digestive biscuits. Chocolate covered ones, of course, are great, but I'm not going to do the chocolate covered one. Um unless my grandson comes along or unless I make some and send them to him. But uh, thanks, Sharon, for letting us know that. Yes, uh, Chris. Danita says, I'm wondering if it was something energetically that you were dealing with, Rosemary, so much shifting in the world and with Gaia right now. Now that was in response to when you said you weren't feeling so great yesterday. Oh, uh. Well, thank you for that, and thank you for your input. Uh, but, you know, I'm a very feet-on-the-ground kind of person. It had nothing to do with the the energy of the universe. I think I just ate something bad. And um, because, you know, whatever the energy is that's going on around, I have a great energy. I have a very powerful energy, and I'm able to, you know, sort of, in, if I feel that something is going on which which is you know aside from my own energy and interfering with my own energy i'm able to correct it uh i'm going to be telling you all when we do our healing wednesdays i'm going to be telling you all how you too can do that uh, by infusing your own aura and painting your own aura yes i did say it painting your own aura your own energy field um but thank you for that and i appreciate it very much but um I think I just, I either ate something that was slightly off or I ate something or I ate too much. So maybe, maybe I ate too much, but I'm good now. Chris. 
Cheryl is wondering if you have any messages for her this morning. No, I don't because unfortunately, oh, I wish I had more time. But, you know, we're going to be do our, doing our off-the-cuff stuff maybe even later tonight, Chris. Okay. I'm game. Okay. So, you know, so we're not going to give you a time. We're just, you know, if you are subscribed, if you are connected into us, it will come right through. It'll be flashing on your screen or on your iPad or wherever it is it flashes. And uh, you're going to be warned, you know, it's going to, you're going to have like a two second warning. Rosemary and I'll tell you it's live. And we're going to be saying, hey, we're doing our off the cuff stuff. So, you, you know, to, we want you to be sort of excited about it, paying attention because I could pop up at any time and maybe I should pop up. I have to go out to dinner, meeting friends for dinner. But when I come back, because it's an early dinner, when I come back, Chris, what do you think? Shall we or shan't we? Will we or won't we? <laughs> it's all about you, Rosemary. If you call me up and say, let's go, I'm there. Let's do, well, I'm going to keep everything in place so we can do it. Okay. So if your game... I'm game. Let's all be we game together. We shall see. <laughs> Off the cuff stuff. It's exciting. Right, Chris? Uh, Sandy says, hello, Rosemary. First time catching you live. I'm oh, watching, hi, darling. I'm watching you from Canada. I discovered you recently. You are truly an inspiration to me as a new psychic medium. Blessings. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Well, Sandy, we're so happy that you found us <laughs> and keep watching. Thank you. Let's see. Do we Denise... have any comment from, from that lovely person who said, I saw you in, in uh, the Netherlands? Have we got any feedback from that at all? Chris, it's hard for you, I know, because you have to keep scrolling up and down, up and down, don't you? I didn't see it as of two minutes ago. Okay, all right. Uh, Jillian says, thank you for demystifying healing. I had always thought it was a hands-on, instant fix kind of situation. Yeah, I know. And so many people are disappointed because they think, you know, you know, uh, people have come to me in the past and they, you know, they think if I just lay my hands on them, ding, 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 <laughs> this going to be cured. No. Sometimes healing, sometimes it happens like that. We had a, a patient in uh, in um, one of our healing centers, uh, uh, close, so fairly close to Doncaster a few years ago. And she came and she wanted to see what it was all about. And uh, I think I, I was the one who gave her healing, just happened myself and a couple of other of my healers, we gave her healing. And um, she told her husband where she was going and he made a joke about it. Oh, you're going to that woo-woo place, right? You know, that's what people used to do. They used to make jokes. They used to think that, you know, we, we were delusional, that people like myself were delusional at the very, the, the very best. Uh, and charlatans at the worst. The thing is that they can't say anything to you when you have a healing center and you never charge your patients a single penny. They can't really say that, <laughs> that you're a charlatan or that you're, or that you're, you know, praying off of people who are sick because I've never charged for healing at all, by the way. But okay, but um, this lady came and uh, an unbeknown uh, to us at the time, she 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 actually was she told me about her hand and her hand had been uh, completely paralyzed for years and years and years and nobody quite knew why, but she was unable to even flex her, her hand was like that. It was just like a fist. And she'd not been able to stretch or use her fingers at all for many, many years. And um, she didn't say anything to us at the time. She left the healing center. I think she probably a bit shocked of, of what was happening. And she went home and um, she walked in. Apparently she told us this the next time she came. She walked into her husband and he's joking. And he's saying, so were there any ghosts? Did you see any weird stuff? Well, you know, what was it like? And she said, well, I can tell you this. And she held up her hand and she went, look at this. So that was uh, an instant healing moment for that lady. But very often it can take a long time. And it isn't about the physical so much as it's about the spiritual. Chris. 
Eric's wondering if you're going to do skinny minis on the off the cuff show. <laughs> do you want me to show you, Eric, how to make my skinny minis? <laughs> you know the joke of that, though, right? The okay, I I do have this fabulous recipe, and I call it skinny minis. It's like a little tiny meat pie, except it's it's chicken. It's chicken and uh, corn, sweet corn, uh, and different things in it. It's oh it, it's delicious anyway it has a lovely sauce in there as well um uh and the the thing is that they are small they are sort of like one portion size although actually sometimes even one of those is too much for me and i'll often cut them in half and eat just half one time and half another time there's nothing there's nothing weight loss about them the only reason i call them skinny minis is because they're so teeny tiny and they look so cute <laughs> but uh i could you, if you want me to do it hey maybe it's been a while since i made those i love those things but yeah i could show you how to make some skinny minis <laughs> all right chris all right so we're we're right at noon we, we, you want to do one or two more oh yeah so chris was answering you about the book they got at auction. It was from a second-hand market. They have online auctions three times a week, which allows right. them to remain open during our lockdowns. It was oh, one cool. of three spiritual books in a lot. I paid $8 Canadian for all three. Oh, all right then. Well, you know what? I'm so glad you got it. And look, as you're reading through it, just a caution here, my darling. Uh, remember the golden rule. Well, as you read through it, the temptation is to read through all of it and you've got 13 soul signs to choose from. Um, you start to read through the descriptions of the character traits and you think, oh, that's me. Oh, wait a minute, no, that's me. No, oh, well, I think I'm this. You will get confused. The golden rule is first find your soul group. Are you fire, earth? air, water. There is another one which we're not, we're not even going there on this show. But anyway, so there are, there are five soul groups, right? Uh, which one are you? So find your group first. Then once you've found your group, you've only got three soul signs to choose from. One of those three you will eliminate immediately. That's not me. That's definitely not me. The other two, you might go back and forth. It could be this, it could be this. Choose the one that you are most of. And I, I actually had a friend of mine who said she, she got these two, but she couldn't decide. So we literally went through the character traits. Are you more this or are you more this? And we literally knocked out the ones that, she, that, that didn't apply to her so much. And she finally realized exactly which soul sign she was. So process of elimination. The golden rule, soul group first. And if you're having a struggle with it, do email us and let us know. This, let me tell you, you are going to love this book. When you found your own soul sign, you're going to be looking at everybody else around you. You're going to be thinking, oh, well, I know that's a fire sign. I know she's a, she's definitely an earth sign. And then you're going to be looking through and you're going to be deciding and you're going to understand why you get on with these people better than you get on with, with these people. You're going to understand why your mother you know, likes your sister better than you, for instance, or you're going to understand why you and your father have this great relationship, but your sister doesn't have such a great relationship. It's going to explain to you the energy that is used and the way that that energy is it has created our soul and how we are compatible with some energies much more than we are with others. You're going to love it. Please let us know. Please, please, please let us know how you're getting on with it. And I want to know what soul sign are you? Chris. All right. Last one from Kat. Rosemary, if and when you have off days, what is it you do for yourself? How do you correct it? Oh, okay. Painting one's own aura. Maybe this will be for the Healing Wednesdays. Yes. Um, you know, everything is energy. Everything is about energy. Sometimes when you're feeling really, really, really rough, and you're throwing up and you know and life is not looking good for you because you're feeling really awful 
it's very hard in those moments, isn't it? When you're having that really, really bad moment, it's really hard to think of anything else uh, to, you know, to, to visualize. Uh, so sometimes if you have a blue blanket, just grab it and wrap it around you because just the act of grabbing it and wrapping it around you is saying you, you're on a, on a subconscious level, you're saying, blue 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 wrap me in blue i want healing i want healing so you know so there are different ways that you can create the energy even when you're not feeling like creating good energy there's different ways that really do make you feel better and that's what i do i try very hard to apply what i'm teaching to my own life and uh, you know and i i also find that once i start to give healing to myself and i work on that very often I will just go out. I was I went to sleep yesterday, which is unheard of for me. I don't sleep during the day, but uh, I, w I went to sleep for two to three hours yesterday. And in that sleep state and with the healing energy that was swirling around, wrapping around me, you know, I woke up. I can't tell you that I woke up 100% because I didn't. But, you know, you can do so many things to help yourself. And, and for those of you who have ongoing health issues, there are so many things that you can do to help yourself, to give you peace, to give you that tranquility that you need. And I know that um, somebody mentioned uh, reading the, the, the book, The Gift of Healing. We do have, um, we do have meditation uh, CDs. Uh, we have, you know, you can buy them individually or we have a set of four or five um, that you can get and if you want to know more about that um, you can just email chris k-r-i-s chris at rosemaryoutair.com or you can go to our website rosemaryoutair.com if you want to know more about our uh, webinars again rosemaryoutair.com we're going to suggest you click that subscribe button when you go to the when you go to the website it doesn't cost you anything i promise you we will not inundate you with information you might get an email once a week or something if that uh we we will keep you abreast of everything that's going on you'll be the first to know you'll be an insider if you subscribe you'll be an insider because you'll get the news before anybody else does about any of the things that we're doing and uh you know when we do our webinar webinars like we're doing on the 8th and then on the 22nd of may when we're doing our you know our uh what is it off the cuff stuff uh, when, you know it'll pop up if you want if you subscribe it'll come up uh, i promise you we won't we won't drive you crazy it'll pop up rosemary on tail live you choose to ignore it or you choose to just join in whichever you want to choose to do but we we have fun with these things so if you're in doubt or if you want to know more if you want to know about healing if you want to be put on our mailing list if you want to be put on our healing list whatever it is you want from us if you email chris k-r-i-s chris at rosemaryaltair.com or you can simply uh write to rosemaryaltair.com uh and um you know whichever is easiest for you but go to the website why don't you uh, because it'll all be laid out for you and it'll give you all sorts of instructions as to what you need to do if you want this or where, where do you need to go to book a ticket for the for the webinar if I want to talk to my mother and she's going to be doing that on the 8th how do I how do I get that then how do I do that go to the website and you know it'll, it'll tell you so the website again is rosemaryoutair.com so we may well just give you a little heads up you're doing our off the cuff stuff today later on uh if it's later on it will not be before five o'clock and it will not be um during the six to eight thing it might be nine o'clock it might be ten o'clock you never know who knows what it might be uh, so i'm giving you like a little window there so anytime i'm sort of going to say anytime after eight o'clock or eight thirty or something like that tonight eastern standard time uh, we'll be doing our off-the-cuff stuff if we're going to do it, which we probably, I love doing it, so why wouldn't we? Um, and, um, you know, again, if you need to know any more, uh, the website, Uh 
I'd like to say thank you, Chris. You were great today. As always, I'd like to say thank you to my spirit guide, Gravel, who, as always, is inspiring and helps us and helps us to, to do these shows. Uh, whispers in my ear all the time as he's doing that. Um, and I would like to say a, a special and a particular thank you to all of you watching. We're so sorry we can never get to all of your questions. We can never get to all of your comments. But actually, once we come off here live, Chris will go through all of your questions. And if she feels that you, you know, you need to have, or if if you are requesting healing, for instance, she'll put you in the healing book. So she will go through them and check out, you know, what we've got here. Uh, we will be back definitely next Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for our the spirit world sees all we should be back next saturday with story time uh wait for it wait for it wait for it yes we shall be doing our off the cuff stuff you never know where you never know when but we're going to be doing it though so we're excited about that so we may or may not see you later on tonight in the meantime please all of you out there have a very very blessed rest of the day and have a very blessed uh, rest of the weekend everybody we hope you're doing something really lovely really nice if not just put your feet up watch a good movie and just uh, chill out and enjoy uh so i'll see you soon thank you for joining us bye bye everybody <laughs>